Um, my name's Josh Nungesser. I'm going to go ahead and get started out of respect to everyone's time. This call is slated to go from one to two o'clock. We're going to we're going to talk about an event that you can <laughs> that you can throw through your business. And if you're a realtor already, you know that this might be really great information to have. And if you're not a realtor already, because I know we've sent some lists, uh, sent the invites to some folks that are testing or considering getting into real estate, then this is some great information that you can kind of put in your back pocket. So when you do get your license, finally, you're ready to rock and you're a step ahead of the rest of us. Um, again, my name is Josh Nungesser. So I'm a realtor at Keller Williams Excel Realty. We're located in Westerville, Ohio, uh, just north of Columbus. I run a small team of, uh, of agents, and we help people all over central Ohio. I'm also a productivity coach. So a lot of the folks that are on this call are part of our coaching program. And so we have weekly calls aimed at different, uh, different topics. This topic, though, I felt was really going to be beneficial for a lot more than just our newer agents. I really feel that um, if, if you've been licensed for a while, you can probably agree that sometimes lead generation gets a little bit boring. Um, lead generation, if, if you've been licensed for a while, um, you know, cold calling is exciting for a little bit and then maybe it loses luster. Maybe that return on the investment of time isn't quite uh, what you had anticipated, or maybe you don't have time to go door knock. Um, so what we're going to talk about here today is an easy, easier way and a more exciting way for you to generate a lot of real estate contacts in a short amount of time. The title of this class is, is called um, How to Make $20,000 in Four Hours Without Making a Phone Call. The, um, the information that I'm presenting here to you guys today uh, will be available to you if you'd like it. Uh, I will send over an email after we hang up. Um, it's a one pager that will guide you through how to best attack this, this topic. Uh, so I would love it if you wouldn't mind in the chat box, please put your name and your contact information so I can get you the information that we cover here. Cover here. So again, in the chat box, please put your name and contact information so I can get you the info. Do you want our uh, email or our phone number? Email is probably best so that I can email the file over. And again, the document that I'll send over is a simple one pager. Um, I'm, I believe in simple and sweet, um, and it'll give you everything that you really need to start thinking about conducting one of these events. As you guys are typing those in, I'm just gonna get started with the content here. So, so thanks for uh, taking your time. As you have questions, maybe raise your hand um, or type it in the chat box uh, and or save it for later. We're gonna leave the last 10 to 15 minutes for Q and A. Um, so whatever's best for y'all, I believe in an interactive call, not just me talking. So the topic, of the name of what we're gonna be discussing, it's called a reverse bold 100. If you're taking notes, I'm gonna explain things in a certain, certain order here. So bold is something that Keller Williams, I'm not a Keller Williams agent, no worries at all. This is meant to be good information for all of us. We can all do it without being Keller Williams agents. Bold is an acronym. It stands for Business Objective, A Life by Design. It's a seven week class building a foundation for you personally so that you're you're building your life by design you're not always working you're creating systems and models in order to live your best hey. life financially physically mentally etc and to create a really good business along the way uh julie asked if everyone can put themselves on mute that would be awesome if you can put yourselves on mute if you do have a question holler though um uh, so Bold, this is a, a bold 100 if you're taking this class, is where you reach out to 100 people and have 100 real estate contacts in one day. Within 24 hours, 
The objective, again, of a bold 100 is to have 100 real estate contacts in the span of 24 hours. Now, for some of us, it might take weeks to get 100 real estate contacts. What's a real estate contact? A real estate contact is where you literally have a phone call, a text message back and forth, a face-to-face -face interaction where you're discussing real estate. That might scare the crap out of some of us. I promise you it's not as bad as it sounds. And once you get going with number one, call number one is the hardest. Call number two is easier. And then by the time you get 100 calls, I promise you, uh, you're, you're, you're doing a happy dance because odds are you set some appointments and you're going somewhere with your business. So a bold 100 is where you call 100 people. A reverse bold 100, which is the topic of our conversation today, is where you get 100 people to call you in the span of a day. If you think that sounds far-fetched, I promise you it can be done. I'm going to share a little bit, some statistics here. I'm going to share some stats about my experiences with a reverse bold 100 and these stats might make your ears perk up a little bit because they are about money and at the end of the day we're probably in this to make some money i have done three reverse bold 100s okay, three of these events the first one i did was in august of 2020 um within that eight hours I did it for eight hours. I set a timeline of eight hours. I didn't want to take all day. I didn't want to take 24 hours. So within eight hours, I received 116 phone calls. 116 people called me. I received 17 leads. Could we all receive more leads? Could we all be busier right now? Heck yeah. I, I, I'm speaking for myself. I'm going to sell 40 to 50 units uh, closed this year we can always afford more business, more money. Of those 17 leads, I've had one closing and multiple other, what we call nurtures, meaning that just because it hasn't closed yet, doesn't mean we're not still talking to those people and nurturing them kind of like we water a seed and get that plant to grow until eventually it blooms into some business. So again, repeating that number, 116 calls in eight hours, 17 leads, one closing. The second reverse bold 100 that I did was in January. If you're not muted, please mute. The second, rever uh, and I'm going to go back. The August one was when we were going back to school here in central Ohio. So we gave away a laptop, an, um, uh, what do you call it? An iMac, MacBook, sorry, MacBook Air and AirPods, it made sense. It was seasonally relevant. The next reverse bold 100 that we did, we did it in January of, of this year. We, we took the approach of new year, new you. And so we gave away items like gym membership. We gave away items like um, uh, Apple Watch, things that could track your health. We gave away a HelloFresh 90-day uh, uh, subscription. And then a couple other items within that call or within that event, we only received 68 phone calls. Okay. 68 phone calls in eight hours. I'll tell you why it didn't succeed as well as we'd wanted, but 68 phone calls, 12 leads and shockingly four closings. So it was my worst attended call time my, my worst event from a call perspective and my best event from a fruitfulness standpoint, we closed four units. I'm going to jump ahead to the last one that we held. We did a September giveaway, a uh, bold 100, reverse bold 100. We had 110 calls in four hours, 110 calls in four hours and uh, 20 leads. And we've already had one closing. September was only a couple months back. We've already had one closing and I've had one other person in contract coming off those conversations. So when I say make $20,000 in four hours, this is what I'm talking about. 
We gave away a Peloton or cash equivalent. That was the item we decided on. So uh, end of the day, I hope those numbers kind of perked your ears. I'm going to throw some dollars at you now. The cost of all the items that we gave away, $2,500, $2,500. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, gee whiz, that sounds great, Josh, but I don't have $2,500. That's okay. We'll talk about that in a little bit. My net or my gross take home from the six closings that we've had through these is $57,000. So I'm going to repeat that. I spent $2,500 and I made $57,000. My team, we made $57,000. Does that sound like something you might be interested in hearing more about? Cool. Well, good. Because I've got a captive audience and we're going to talk more about this. So we're going to talk about how. How does this work? Um, I'm going to be reading pretty much directly off of this one pager that, again, I'm happy to send to you. If you're just jumping on the call, please put your name and contact information in the chat so that I can send you the information that we're covering here today so that you don't have to take a million notes. You can really pay attention. So first, we're going to talk about task versus purpose. If um, I grew up in the retail world, and we always had this ingrained in us. What's the task and what's the purpose? The task of doing this event is to have 100 people call you over the course of a set period of time, whether that's eight hours, four hours, 24 hours, whatever you decide to do. That's the task. The purpose though of that task is to talk to people and to have real estate conversations and to do it in a unique way that doesn't require you doing all the phone calling, getting all nervous, getting sweaty palms before you have to make the call, right? The other purpose here is to get leads to build your business. Okay, so task versus purpose. So when I go back to that January event where we had a really crappy turnout, six, I say crappy, it, we still got 68 people to call me. The task was not fulfilled. I did not get 100 phone calls, but the purpose was way more than fulfilled. When you get four closings off of an eight hour shift that equals Pro those probably amounted to, I don't know, thirty-five to forty thousand dollars in my in our pockets. I'd say the purpose was met. So it's not always, you know, your first your first stab at this, you may not actually get one hundred real estate contacts, and that's okay. As long as you're having those real estate contacts, you're having fun with it, and getting people's contact information, building your database, and ultimately building your business. So what does planning need to look like? The first thing I, I, would, I would challenge us all, it's the end of the year, 2021. If you're a licensed realtor already, or if you're getting your license in the next you know, few months, have you already sat down and started thinking about 2022? What does your year look like? What are your goals for the year? So if I've closed, I basically, I think I closed five this year. So it's about 10% of my business came from these reverse bold 100s. It's a, it's a viable uh, business uh, strategy or system. So what, is your, what are your goals? If your goals are to sell maybe 20 houses, who knows? Maybe you could do a quarter of that just based off of these, these bold 100s. So when planning this event, though, it's important to plan it a couple months out so that you're not trying to uh, chase, chase the, the planning. So what I mean by that is plot out your calendar for 2022. Be strategic on timing. So you'll notice that we did these uh, reverse bold 100s in August and in January and in September. So if you think of the real estate cycle, business is really slow in January. For most people, slow in January and February. And then in March, we start to take that uptick up. It's the spring market. And then the, the roof comes off in the spring and summer. And then come about the 1st of August, when schools start back in, things really start to taper off. And we start to come back down. So for me, it was strategic to do an event in January when I needed some leads. I needed to revitalize my business because things are slow. And then I did it again 
in August or September because things are starting to slow down again. And I wanted to re-amplify the business. It's kind of like, uh, what are those things called when you, you, you paddles on your chest, when you try and uh, uh, bring some, resuscitate someone, it's like that for your business. So be thinking through your, for, through your business, when are things slow? Maybe you haven't done a darn deal yet and things are slow all the time. That's okay. I want to encourage you to take action on that and maybe do one of these events here. Um, you, I would also encourage you to uh, communicate ahead of time with vendors. Vendors can give you assistance with things like the cost. They can offset the cost. What do I mean, what do I mean by that? If you've been a, an agent for a while, you probably know that most vendors want your business badly. When I say vendor, I mean title companies, inspectors, um, home insurance, lenders. There's all kinds of people, electricians, painters, et cetera. They want your business. What are they willing to do for them to earn your business? Well, maybe it can come in the, term, in the form of a financial, um, um, financial gift to your business. And what that means is, I know I told you I spent $2,500 on all the stuff that we gave out. Well, I had vendors like lenders and title companies offset the cost of some of those items so that I wasn't paying all of it myself. And when that happens, it shows, it shows me that number one, they appreciate me enough and my business enough to know that I will give it back. I will give more business to them if they help my business out. It also creates a really good uh, additional network of people. And, and honestly, it saves, saves me money at the end of the day, which is I'm all about that. Lastly, maybe you're, maybe you're a solo agent right now, just breaking into the business and you have no idea what you're doing. Don't be afraid to pair with somebody else who's in the same exact shoes as you. There's nothing against, there's nothing, there's no rules on this. You could, you could reach out to the other agent in, in your brokerage that just got licensed as well and say, hey, you want to go in on this? Why don't we each put a hundred bucks in, go buy a $200 gift card and see if we can get a bunch of people to call us to try and win that $200 gift card. At a very high level, that's all we're doing. We're putting some item out there for people to have a desire to win and to win it, they have to call us. That's how, that's the secret sauce, by the way. That's how I get a hundred people to call me is I get some really great items that people want to win and they call me to win them. We'll get into the items and how you decide on what items here in a moment. Um, but again, there's no rules on this. I, uh, so a couple of weeks back, I was able to share in our, in a regional Keller Williams, um, panel, um, discussion about my experiences with reverse bold 100s. And I was able to be on stage with a couple other big time agents that had done it differently than I had in the past. One of which paired with their entire office, all the agents in their office threw in a hundred bucks and they bought Cincinnati Bengals season tickets. As a draw to have people call them, each agent individually held this event on their own. The other, the other client or the other agents did the same thing. They all acted as if there was their, this was their own event. So they each individually had hundreds of people calling them because who doesn't want, if you're in Cincinnati, who wouldn't want season tickets to the Bengals? You could make a million, make a mint off of them if you resold them, or if you're a Bengals fan, you can go to the games. So they had tons of success with that and they didn't just do it by themselves. So the question is, who could you pair with? Let's talk about the giveaway items now. So what would be appealing to you to get you to actually call somebody to try and win something? That's how I would approach this if I were in your guys' shoes. Other things that you can think about when thinking about giveaway items, I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my retail days here. So let's take the month of February. What holidays occur in February? Somebody tell me what some holidays are. Valentine's Day, Josh. Valentine's Day. Are there any other holidays? President's Day. Okay, great. I'm glad you brought the two up that I had uh, uh, staged here. 
So Black History Month. Exactly. Okay. Let's go. That's good. That's good too. I'm gonna I'm gonna compare and contrast. What hot items are there for President's Day? You're probably racking your brain thinking, I don't know, like a Mount Rushmore statue. I don't know. No, nobody cares about President's Day typically, but a lot of people care about Valentine's Day. So maybe you could do a reverse bold 100 where you give out things like, I don't know, a dinner reservation to a steakhouse along with a $200 gift card. Or maybe you give away a wine and chocolates package. Think, think strategically about what you would want if you were thinking about Valentine's Day. And then it's just all about marketing the crap out of it to make sure people see it and want to call in. And you can go through every month of the year doing this. So in January, the reason we went with New Year, New You was because how many of us set uh, New Year's resolutions to improve our health? I would speculate a lot of us. So if we're able to bridge that gap and say, hey, oh, you were thinking about buying an Apple watch because it tracks your health and your fitness and stuff. Well, why don't you just call us and win one? Save a couple hundred bucks. And it works. So in terms of items, again, I'm going to go back to this pair with your vendors to offset costs. I would, I would go as far as to say, hey, lenders or title companies, here's what my calendar looks like for 2022. And I'm talking like right now, go reach out to your, 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 your vendors and say, hey, can we establish maybe a game plan for maybe two or three events where you help me sponsor some stuff? Maybe here's the budget that I was thinking of. What are your thoughts? So you're, you're doing a good job from a business perspective because we all remember this is a business we're running, right? Well, lenders and title companies, they're, they're running businesses as well. So it would look crappy if I reached out a week ahead of the, the event and said, hey, by the way, can you give me 300 bucks? No, we should do that on the, the onset. If you're a solo agent and or maybe your, your business isn't where you want it and you don't have a lot of closings under your belt, then I would encourage you to play what we call at Keller Williams, red light, green light with your finances. It's really important that we don't overspend. Meaning if I have no money coming in, that I really shouldn't be spending any money on this event. So I really should pair with either other agents in the office or vendors to help me offset the cost of giving away these, these items. Choose seasonally relevant items. So if you're, if you're giving away something this summer or the fall, maybe you're thinking fire pits and grills and pool type items. Uh, just, just be seasonally relevant. And if you're having trouble with what that might look like, go to your local Walmart or your Target and see what they're selling because that's what people want. Target and Walmart are way smarter than, than we are with what people want. And so they already know and they order it. Just buy some of that buy whatever's featured. Make sure your items have a mass appeal. So I told you in September, we gave away a, a Peloton. A Peloton, if you don't know what that is, it's one of those exercise bikes with the TV thing on it. And it costs $1,500 at entry level. <clears throat> I understand that, and I think we all do, not everyone cares about getting healthier or not everyone is even able to ride an exercise bike. So in order to meet people the broadest with the broadest net possible, we said you could win a Peloton or take the cash equivalent. So I'll ask you guys, does $1,500 cash interest you? Probably, maybe more so than the Peloton. So the winner got to choose which one they wanted. In the end, of, at the end of the day, the winner decided to go with the cash, therefore saving me on taxes. That was a win for me. <laughs> uh, giveaways close to holidays are great. Uh, I mean, if you're giving away items right now, there'd be a large appeal to you giving away some really cool items, right? Because people want to save on their Christmas shopping. Also, there are a lot of deals out there. So I wanna encourage us to, to think 30 days out. When you're thinking of what events to give away, probably try to procure those items about 30 days out so that you're not scrambling to try to actually get the actual item. 
we would hate for you to market that you're going to give away a, uh, the hottest toy of the year and then not be able to actually get one. Uh, also, one last thing, and this is a great way to additionally grow your business. Think about going to local businesses and saying, hey, I'm going to be, I'm a, I'm a local realtor. First off, shake your hand. Here's my card. Kiss their babies. Be the, be the, the businessman of the year there, businesswoman of the year. And ask them, say, hey, would you be interested in me spotlighting your business and getting 100 people involved in maybe promoting your business? You can do this through giving me a gift card. How does, I don't know, $100 sound? You'll be shocked at how many businesses, local businesses will say, absolutely, you're going to get 100 people to put a spotlight on my business. That sounds great. I'll give you 100 bucks. That's no skin off my back. That's another way of offsetting costs, but also promoting your business in your local community. All right, let's talk about marketing next. I'm going to attempt to share my screen here and embarrass myself. So what does marketing look like for us? We don't start marketing these events till about seven days out. <laughs> you might say that that's not enough, and maybe you're right. Uh, in the three that we've run, We've started about seven, maybe 10 days out. Reason being, my thought is that people, are, we all live in a right now society. Meaning, if you're telling me about something a month out, I'm totally going to forget about that in 30 days. I think most of you would probably agree. So we start about seven days out with our marketing. And it starts with someone that's going to grab your attention. So let me see if I can. So, so for me, what grabs my attention is, is, Things that are silly, things that are stupid, things that re involve family or kids, um, and things that kind of, I don't know, are just quirky. So let's see if I can do this. Hopefully this works for y'all. This is an example of our last uh, uh, giveaway, our last reverse bold 100, what we did to start marketing this. Please don't think less of me once you see this. Hot dag, this is tough. I need a bigger pipe. Trying to ride through the Alps, training for the Tour de France. I need to call Josh on Friday. I heard he's giving away a Peloton. Starting at 9 a.m., going to call Josh so I can get me a real Peloton. Real bike. Yeah. All right. How do I stop share? Well, I had fun with that video. Hopefully you could hear it okay. I involved my kids, my kid. He had fun with the video. He thinks he's a like a YouTube or Facebook sensation now. And the, the clearness of the way that the message was received from my friends and my, my sphere on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and email, uh, it spoke volume. So the touches that you get through social media, if you're not using social media, please do. I told you I'm a productivity coach. I preach and preach and preach. Use social media because it's free and you can have fun with it. So for me, I throw a stupid mullet on and I look like Ricky Bobby and I act like a weirdo and, and uh, I have fun doing it and maybe I'm weird, but it, it delivers what I need and that is attention. So what I say is use TikTok too. There's no right, there's no wrong. If you're not one of those people who's willing to make a fool out of yourself, I get it. Do whatever's comfortable for you. Seven days out. So we, uh, as far as marketing goes, we like to conduct our events on Fridays. The reason that we hold our events on Fridays is because if you think about it, back when you were a nine to fiver, had you pretty much checked out come Friday? Most people, yes, we've checked out mentally and we're looking for any excuse possible to get away from work. So we've had the most success with calls on Fridays. Going back to that January call last year, uh, this year where I told you we only got 68 calls, we did it on a Monday. We did it on Monday because it was uh, Martin Luther King Day. And my thought was, hey, everyone's going to be off work. I'm sure they'll all call in. Well, that wasn't quite the case, but we still did obviously achieve our objective, was to get, which was to get closings. 
So we do all of our marketing, or we do all of our marketing based on that Friday release of the actual event. The key here is to introduce. Okay, you're not on video. The, the key here is to introduce in this first video what you're doing, and then in the verbiage that accompanies the video, tell them the rules to win. The reason you want to tell them the rules to win is because the rules to win encourage people to call you having already done their homework. What does that mean? So when I tell you that we had 110 people call and we had 20 referrals or whatever it was, in the rules to win, for us, it's call in between these hours. If you call in, you get one entry. If you bring a referral with you, you get five extra entries for every referral. So what you're doing is planting the seed in their minds to say, oh man, so if I want more entries for this Peloton or $1,500, I need to think of somebody in my life that might have a real estate need. And then I need to give that information, their contact information to Josh on next Friday. Okay, cool. I got that. So they start doing their homework. The reason this is so important to establish the rules up front is because it makes the phone call process that much easier. You're not worried about, you're not, you're not tiptoeing around asking people for business. They know why you, why they are calling you. They're calling you because you want referrals. You're literally establishing that in the rules. And so on the conversation, it's simple. And we'll get to the conversation here in, in, a, in a minute, but establishing the rules is a priority early and often. So as the marketing continues, the first marketing piece is something that's crazy in your face. And then as the event approaches, I like to do it every other day until you're about two days out. Maybe you create a graphic or maybe you create other videos or maybe you put a picture of a Peloton. There's all kinds of different ways to do this. I encourage you all to take multiple different approaches to this though. When I say social media, that's just one option that we have. We got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, et cetera. You could also send this, this video that you did or the still image that you do via I don't know, email or text message. If you're a Keller Williams agent, you know we already have access to KW Command and can do that with a couple clicks of a few buttons. If you're not a KW agent and want to talk about becoming a KW agent, holler at me, I'd be happy to talk. But there's easy ways for you to bulk batch emails and text messages to your sphere. The goal is to get as many people to know about this thing as possible. That's the whole objective of marketing. The beauty is that with every touch, with every correspondence, with every message that you send out, it's coming from your own business page or your own business email or your business phone number. And the beauty of it is that if, if we're, if, according to Gary Keller, who's our CEO, we're supposed to get a minimum of 36 touches with each person in our sphere every single year. Well, if you're thinking about it, the first, the Friday, the Friday correspondence, that's one touch. Then you do one again on Sunday, that's two. Another one on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're going to hit them two or three times. And then you're going to celebrate the winner the next day. That's nine, maybe 10 touches that you can get out of this one event. So for those of us who are timid, or scared to call our database like we're supposed to do to try to ask for business, this is a really easy way to get a lot of touches and to have fun with it. You're not overtly pounding them in the face asking for business. You're saying, hey, I'm giving something away. I'm giving you something. All you need to do is call me. Here's the rules. All right. Um, so in addition to the, the social media, we've got email, text, video goes a long way. I encourage y'all to use video as much as possible. That is the medium that most people identify with right now. If you're on Instagram, what catches your, your attention? Video. 
So think about video. And if you're not comfortable with video, I promise you the more and more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. Cool. All right. Um, event logistics. <clears throat> So this is where like having all your ducks in a row from a logistics and administrative standpoint are very crucial. <laughs> because if you recall, the whole purpose of this is to get people's contact information that may have interest in buying or selling a house. So if the day comes and you've said, hey, call me between the hours of nine and five, and all you have is your phone and you're, you're out showing houses and you're, you're with the kids playing around, and you get a phone call and somebody says, yeah, actually, I, I know somebody. Great, cool, tell me about them. Well, if you don't have any way of keeping track of that person, then the whole purpose was just washed down the drain of you having this event. I encourage you to use a uh, resource such as a Microsoft Excel sheet. Or what my team does is we use a Google Sheet. What that allows us to do a Google Sheet, if you haven't, if you've ever played around with Google Drive, you know that it's a living, breathing document that can be accessed by multiple people on multiple different computers. So logistically, with everybody that calls in, we're putting their information into this Google Sheet and we can all see it immediately. The things to track are things like their name, their phone number, and get full names, please, their phone number their email address. And the way that we ask for this is, hey, in case you win, what's the best, uh, what's the best email to call you or to, to reach back out to you at? Great. Every 100% of the time, they will give you your, their email. 100% of the time because they want to win and they want to be notified. The key here is what's your, the verbiage is what's your best email? They'll always give you the one that they check the most. Other things to include would be Referral information. So that's again going to be name, any notes that you can take down about that person, phone number, and email address. So, first and foremost, our objective is to track all the information. So, by the end of the day, hopefully, we've got a list of 100 names at least, along with a whole big chunk of people that uh, have been referred to you. The day of the event. Nine. So let, so I'm going to, I'm going to give you case in point. So this last one that we did, we did a nine to nine to one o'clock. The reason being my team is growing. I have a couple of buyers agents, a couple of these individuals are on our call right now. Um, and so we've got uh, five people right now that can help me leverage their spheres so that it's not, not all 100 calls are coming from me uh, and my sphere, but they can also help me field the calls. So one key here is call forwarding is a lifesaver. So if you're gonna jump into this with your team or you've got an administrative assistant, great. Turn on call forwarding. If you need to know how to do that for your own personal device, go to the Google. The Google will tell you how to do that and how to turn it off once your event is done. Call forwarding is a lifesaver. The morning up, so nine o'clock hits. You've done a ton of marketing leading up to this point. What you're gonna find is that nine o'clock is your strongest time of phone calls because everyone wants to be get, get in there, get it knocked out and, and move on with their day. What you'll see is that things kind of peter out about 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes in because we've had a, a flurry and then things kind of taper off. So you want to hit people throughout the course of your event. It's like a telephone. A telethon does fun things throughout. Like if you ever watch one on PBS or whatever, they do fun things throughout to encourage you to call in. So for us, what we like to do, we've got some swag. So we, we have logo material. Uh, we've got these, we've got some shirts, et cetera. We like to say, hey, the first caller, you're going to get a hat. And then as the day progresses, if we're struggling, we'll go ahead and do a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live and say, hey, the next 10 callers, you get a hat too. Or if you don't have swag, do a $5 gift card to Starbucks. Everyone loves that crap. Do something to entice people throughout the day to call you. Another helpful tip. If you haven't heard of this thing called Sly Broadcast, I'm going to type it in the chat here. 
<clears throat> Hold on one second. Sly broadcast is a great way to touch your entire database with the clicks of a couple buttons. Have you ever received a phone call where it rang like once or half of one time and then went directly to voicemail? That's what we call a sly broadcast. So what you're doing is you're, the, the call comes from your phone number. It's just an app that you can download. I believe it was free to download. And then based off the number of calls, that's how much dollars you need to put in there. It's pretty cheap. <clears throat> but we leave a voicemail and it says, hey, don't forget our Peloton giveaway is happening now. Hurry up and call before time runs out. And most people don't even listen to the message. They see that they missed a call from you and they'll call you right back. And then you've kind of baited them into calling you, but it, it works. Other things, other resources to consider are Twilio. Twilio is a mul, uh, mass texting app. Uh, again, very low price. And it's a way to reach a ton of people with the click of a few buttons. So during the course of the giveaway, if we're finding things have slowed down dramatically, send a text message out to the world. You'll get another spike in calls. Um, let's see what else here. This is the most important part. Don't stress about the conversation. They know, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, because you've established in the rules, they know why they're calling you. They're calling you because you're running a business and you're doing a cool giveaway. They want to win that. And so in order to win, they know the rules. So my conversation normally looks like, oh, hey, Jim, how's it going? Because their, their you know, number pops up. Jim, how's things going? And I, I take the approach that this is maybe going to be the best phone call that I, take, that I have all year with this person. And so I don't try to rush it. I don't try to get them off the phone because again, I've got call forwarding set up. So I'm not going to miss any calls. I also record a voicemail just in case it doesn't get picked up saying, hey, sorry, I missed you. We're doing this big giveaway. I'll call you right back. But during the course of this phone call, I approach it with the uh, Ford method. Ford method. I'm going to type this in the chat as well. Ford is an acronym that we use when we're struggling with how to converse with our clients or our, our sphere. Ford is small talk. So you start off with family. Hey, John, how's the family been? I've seen you on Facebook and stuff. It looks like Zach uh, is growing up right before my very eyes. So then they start talking about family. Cool, you're loosening them up. Then you ask them, well, how's your job? How's your job going? Did you uh, have experience any issues with COVID and stuff? No, oh, you got promoted, awesome. And then what happens when you ask them about their job? They're gonna ask you about yours and then boom. Well, business is great, honestly, or, or you know, be honest with them. Well, I could, I could have a little bit more business right now. That's what, kind of why we're doing this actually. Uh, I've got you entered for one, for one uh, entry to win the Peloton. You know the rules. If you want five more entries, who else do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate this year? And then you just let them give it to you. If they don't know of anybody, just invite them to, to give you a text or a phone call later. Say, hey, no problem, John. I know it's kind of a, a tough thing. If you do think of anybody, work, church, neighbors, et cetera, holler at me later. I'd be happy to, happy to speak with that person. After occupation, you talk about recreation. Hey, you got any vacations coming up? Hey, what's the holidays look like for you? And then last, dreams. What are your dreams? Are you going to retire soon? Like uh, uh, you think about having more kids? Like what's, what's big picture things? So these are all small talk mechanisms that you can use if you're struggling with how to create small talk. Moral of the story, don't hesitate to ask for their business. That's the whole objective. They know why they've called. Don't stress about it. Once you've done it once, I promise you it'll become easier and easier and easier. And here's the key. If you're doing this with other people, they also have to do the same. If, the, if they just call in and you say, okay, got you entered. Have a nice day. You completely miss the boat. Lastly, last thing I'll say is make a big deal out of the winner. This, this thing isn't done after your call session ends. This thing can continue. 
the next, so what we do is we, uh, we have one of those spinning wheel apps. So you take all the information that you got from your Google Drive document and you input it into this little app and you spin the wheel. Um, Lauren, who's on the call, she's done this uh, where she actually takes a screenshot of the wheel spinning. So it's kind of exciting. And then we post it the next day with the winner. Uh, it gets a ton of love and everyone congratulates the person who won. From there, why not? Why stop there? What if a couple of days later you took a, you did a post or a video or something of you presenting that person with the Peloton or presenting that person with the check? There's, there's so many different touches here that you can take advantage of. Um, and it's easy and it's fun. So that is a reverse bold 100 in a nutshell. The reason I titled the class make, make $20,000 in four hours is because we did, we literally did this. We've already closed $13,000 in GCI with one closing that came from a referral on the September bold 100. We've already had another one in contract that's going to be similarly priced. So the, the real title could be more like make 25K. I'm not saying what you're going to make. I'm just saying what's possible. And we did it in as few as four hours. So I want to open it up for questions, comments, anecdotes, anything. Someone's talking. Hi, Josh. This is Julie. So the conversation with the person that calls in with referrals, do you add that person to your database, even if they are not interested right now, if they have no real estate interest? Yeah. So what you'll find is that a lot of times the people will call in and you can go ahead and add them to your database and then they'll have a referral of somebody that doesn't know that they that their buddy just gave their name as a referral. So when you try to reach out, it may be radio silence. So I've told you my the the best one that we did was in September we got 20 referrals. I have not actually been able to contact all 20 yet. I have probably hit at least uh, two thirds of them. But a lot of those people, if you think about it, they're they're like a nurture. So we have right now business and we have nurtures. I would encourage you, what, do, what would it hurt to put them in your database and to start drip campaigning them or to start throwing smart plans their way? So I would say 100%, yes, put them in, in your database. Okay, excellent. And also, do you, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Do you mention, hey, so-and-so gave me your name when you contact them? I do. I like to bridge that gap of awkwardness and say, hey, we were running this big promotion and John, John gave me your name. Um, I hope that's okay. And he mentioned that you might have a real estate need. And I was just calling to see if I could help in any way. Um, approach it that way. And uh, I like to text them first and say, hey, I'm going to call you about nine o'clock if that's okay. And uh, sometimes they'll respond ahead of time and, and say, yeah, that's great. Sometimes you'll just call them and um, you hope to, hope to connect. But end of the day, you're not going to bat a thousand. Uh, for us, our... Our success rate, let's see here, so six closings off of a total of, tell Jack to be quiet. Uh, let's see here, 39, 59 leads that we've gotten over the three calls and we've only had six closings. So that's uh, what, 10% success rate. I'll take that. I mean, the dollars and cents work and you know, the more we do, the better, the better referral rate we're getting, uh, meaning that the very first event that we had, we had 14% of people give us a referral. The last event that we had, we had over 18% give us a referral. So we're getting better. And I think the reason for that is because we're saying what the rules are up front and we're being very clear. This is why we're doing this. Okay. Thank you. Very helpful. I can't wait to try this. Great questions. Thank you. Josh, question here. Do you find that you have the same people calling in every time? And because we're realtors and we have lots of other realtor friends that seem to watch us on social media, do you have realtors calling in just to try to win? And what do you do with them? 
it's funny that you asked that because somebody asked that at the regional thing. And the, the, the real thing is I've never had another realtor call me. Somebody did though. And they actually, through that conversation, they, the, the realtor that called in loved what we were doing so much and loved how it was a Keller Williams thing that that person actually ended up coming to Keller Williams. So that's a lead opportunity right there. Um, as far as the same people calling, yes, we oftentimes get the same people calling. You just saw uh, a really good person jump on here. His name's Tony Diller. He's uh, my go-to inspector, but he's also a good friend. I think he calls every time. Uh, he actually helps us. Uh, don he, he donates a lot of stuff to the, uh, to the cause as well. But the way I look at it, Alicia, is this is my quarterly touch with this person. So this is a way for me to keep in contact with the person and to provide a value back to them. So I don't poo-poo the fact that I'm getting a lot of the same people calling me. Because if you think about it, if, even if you only do this twice a year, that's two really strong touches with somebody and you're giving them value and you're staying prevalent in their minds. So I don't mind getting the same call from the same people. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, if not, I've got Tony on the line here. So this, it's funny that um, we're talking about reverse bold 100s because I just did a reverse bold 100 on a recruit from a recruiting standpoint. Meaning, I um, I challenged pe existing realtors or people that are thinking about getting their real estate license to call me in return for the chance to win a um, an iPad or some uh, Beats by Dre earbuds, headphones. And one of the uh, folks who helped me offset the cost of that was Mr. Tony Diller. I, again, he is my uh, number one inspector, uh, writes a really great report. Because he's a sponsor of what we're doing here, I wanted to allow him to chat real quick. If you are looking for an awesome inspector who writes the best report that you'll ever see, then he's your guy. Tony, you wanna chat for a minute? Tell them about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, thanks for letting me be on. Let me uh, tell you guys about our company. Um, company is called Dwell Inspection Services. It's about four and a half years old. Um, we have about, we've done about 1500 inspections. Um, we have an office in Columbus and Cincinnati. Um, so we are booming in both cities. Um, we offer home inspections, termites, we do multifamilies, um, we do radon, and we do, we just added sewer scopes, so we can offer all that stuff um, for, for your clients. Um, it was Josh was talking about our report, we use Spectora, which is the best report system in the industry, um, and we, we cater our reports to our clients, so we're making them really easy for them to read, um, and not trying to make it a very construction-y, or a lot of language that other people won't won't be able to understand. Um, yeah, uh, it's been a great year um, and always looking to add new realtors to our to our list. So if you need anything from us, um, I love to I'll buy you lunch or coffee or something and we can communicate. You can ask me any questions you got. I just included in the chat uh, all of Tony's uh, information. So if you're interested in, uh, in learning more about him, uh, I'd, I'd recommend him simply because he's great with your clients as well. A lot of times, once you get people in contract, you don't go to the inspection because it's three hours of boredom, honestly. But Tony does a great job of not uh, scaring people. Uh, we have quite a few inspectors out there who like to uh, try to earn their money and scare the crap out of people. And we don't want that. So thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate you. The only other thing I'd add is we're... Oh, we're up front on everything. So if you want to know anything about pricing, we have no like hidden fees or anything. Everything's listed on our website at dwellinspectionservices.com. You can see a couple sample reports there as well. So um, yeah, thanks, Josh. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, and then we're going to um, end with one more sponsor who couldn't be on. His name is Brandon Clayton. He's the one... Uh, who helped me with uh, another item giveaway. He is a lender with Rapid Mortgage. Um, Rapid Mortgage does things rapidly. 
They can close deals very quickly. They're, uh, uh, they come highly recommended from everyone who's used them. And the reason I know Brandon is because he actually volunteered at a Red Day. If you don't know what Red Day is, it's a culture piece with Keller Williams where we believe in giving back to our community. Well, he was actually there throwing mulch and planting, planting flowers and stuff. And I got a chance to talk to him and thought very highly of him and his company. And so um, great resource there as well. For anyone in our coaching program, he also sponsors our Mojo Power Dialer, saving us about 150 bucks a month. So those of you out there on the call, if you're not in a coaching program and interested in finding out more, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I will type uh, Brandon's name and information is in the chat. And lastly, my name and contact information will go into the chat as well. So you can reach out to me with any additional questions that you have. Otherwise, I'm going to let you all go unless you have any other questions. Going once. All right. Thank you so much for attending. Let me know if you guys do these in the future. I would love to hear uh, about your success stories or if you ran in any pitfalls. Don't worry. You're going to mess up some things. Just learn from it and improve. Failing forward is a real thing. So do it a lot. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks so much. Thanks, Josh.